What's human officially released today? There is a whole lot to talk about this scary free-to-play MMO, as in the past couple months I've spent quite a lot of time exploring the survival game to document pretty much everything you want to know to start strong. I've checked out both PvE and PvP servers with different characters and progressed towards the end game. Tried different ways of leveling up fast, efficient resource farming, catching rare deviants and so much more. So guys, here we are back with a new guide in which I'm going to share everything you want to know to start strong. Not just survive, but thrive in one's human from your first minutes into the massive open world. So let's get right to it. I quickly want to thank Starry Studio for sponsoring today's video and help me spread the word about Once Human's official release. Check out the game on Steam with my link in the description down below and start playing today for free. Please keep in mind that everything shown in today's video was recorded on a build prior to the official release of Once Human. Rest assured that the majority of information shared today will still be accurate with possibly some slight differences. Alright, so the first thing you're going to be doing when you log into the game is choosing your server. This is very important as you can choose between both PvE and PvP servers, player versus environment or player versus player. Essentially, they both feel like player versus environment, while if you go with PvP, you will have slightly more gameplay features and also the option to visit competitive areas. Even more important, focus on the day or phase the server is currently in, as in one's human, character progression will reset after X amount of time. This is especially important for PvP, as you don't want to have a disadvantage over your enemies and have enough time to progress with your character. The crossbow, the weapon you start off with your adventures, is actually one of the best ones, if not the best, to pick up early. As not only does this one hit very hard, but you can also retrieve its ammo every time after you've taken down a foe. This will make hunting wildlife and taking out enemies a whole lot easier, while this one becomes much more interesting for the mid and late game. As with a couple upgrades, you will have a chance of not losing any bullets. You can instantly shoot another one, which allows you to hunt wildlife super fast and efficiently. After some progression in the game though, you will also unlock sniper rifles, which are my absolute favorite weapon of choice because they simply hit like a truck, can fire multiple times and well, what can I say, are simply very satisfying to fire. One of the most important things in the game is looting for resources. For this, you want to search for towns where you can salvage for loot and also have to complete these Rift Anchor events. When you activate them, you already get a ton of rewards for them. But once you've completed all the objectives in this area, you will get even more rewards. Rift Anchors can be spotted easily with these purple beams shooting up in the sky while the resource crates can be a different story, which actually come with these outlines, yellow or blue, which does make them a little bit easier to find. Of course, you also want to pick up all the white garbage in the area, as you can salvage this for precious loot. But even more interesting, what you can do is click your finger to highlight these chests and make it a whole lot easier to find them. At these points of interest, you can sometimes also find these jumping puzzle chests, for which you first have to interact with a purple glowing object which highlights the next one. After you've collided with every single one of them, a hidden chest will become visible and yours to collect. From time to time you will get stuck at finding the mystical crates which are without doubt the most challenging objects to find in these zones. I definitely recommend you to check out the rooftops, sometimes use staircases or ladders to climb in towers which we also had to do for the one in Evergreen. It's definitely worth hunting for these as they always come with a precious reward, blueprints for all sorts of powerful weapons you can unlock. And we just got our hands on the recurve crossbow frag, 60 out of 6 parts so we can instantly unlock it and start crafting it at our base. So if we open up the map, what you can do is search for that home icon and press quick travel or teleport. So you don't have to waste precious time to get to it very quickly. While another thing what you can do once you are inside your base is open up your map and quick travel to already explored towns. Even more interesting, we also have these teleportation towers, which you can travel to for a small amount of credits. If you are already close to one of these towers, you can actually use 
use them to travel to another one as well. While the further you travel, the more expensive this will be. This one costs 121. If we go a little bit further away, 135. 195 etc so definitely keep this in mind if you want to make travel a little bit cheaper and use your quick travel to your base every time when your cooldown is ready and quick travel for free so back to the teleportation towers these can actually be used for a whole lot more things like farming rare resources or come across precious deviants which are very hard to find in this example i'm gonna do both so i'm searching for this silver ore couldn't find it in the region which it usually spawns in well what we're gonna do right now is simply make our way back to the teleportation tower and instead of doing the regular interact to teleport to another one we can actually change the route this puts us in a different phase of the world, so everything will be exactly the same, like landmarks, while the spawns of items, creatures, and also the players you come across will be entirely different. This right here is tin, which we only found in the previous one, but check it out. This right here is the silver ore, slightly more blue in tint compared to the tin. And if we mine it, we also get our hands on a precious resource and also a deviant called Digby Boy. This is an essential deviant you want to get your hands on to make farming resources a whole lot easier. As then you never ever have to worry about chopping down some trees or mining or to get your hands on all the resources you're gonna need for crafting and repairing your weapons and armor. Check it out, they're all going on an adventure to farm even more resources for me. So let's quickly check out the logging beavers location as well, as this one can also be picked up very easily. This one I always find right next to the Myers Market. Southwest of it, you will find this little farm area, but also a docks where you usually have these fishing events. While if you walk to the end of the pier, well, this is where I always find the nice logging beaver, which has a high securement chance on lower levels, Keep your eyes open at all times as we just stumbled upon a wild gingerbread house floating above the road southwest of a little town called Greywater Camp. You can find even more deviants at this specific location while you want to check out my ultimate deviant hunting guide for that in which I cover like 20 to 30 of these which you can get your hands on early game. Talking about rare encounters, during your adventures you can also spot these purple circles floating in the sky, which will lead you to a random world event where you can actually pick up a whole lot of free resources. Once you've entered the area of the event, you usually get phased into a survival mode where you have to deal with an X amount of creatures or bus to reap the rewards. After you've done that, at the very end, a crate will be waiting for you at the same location with a whole lot of energy links or standard currency, fuel to power up your vehicle and so much more. So every time you spot one of these purple circles in the sky, be sure to check him out for bonus resources. Once you've unlocked a weapons workbench, you can start crafting some very powerful gear, both weapons and armor, while this is also where you can repair and calibrate it. Let's quickly focus on the crossbow tab, as we recently found this purple blueprint, which is actually a lot more powerful compared to the green variant which you start off with. Even more interesting, you also have access to different tiers. The higher the tier, the better the stats of the item. Important though is that you also have to search for higher level crafting materials, which are to be found, of course, in those higher level points of interest or zones, especially where you have these Rift Anchor events. Use the disassembly bench to salvage all the trash you come across to get your hands on all these precious resources. Anyways, now we can craft this powerful crossbow much better compared to the one we previously had equipped. If you want to become even more powerful, you can, after you've crafted a certain item, further upgrade your gear. Let me quickly craft a tier 2 variant of this crossbow and check out the calibrate menu. So this is where we can throw in that item and with the addition of some materials and money, we can upgrade this one to boost the damage output. This can actually be done multiple times with precious resources to make them so much more powerful 
which is something I recommend you to do at all times, as now this one deals a whole lot more damage. Same can be done for armor, so if you want to have a boost to survivability, this is how you can dramatically upgrade your HP, resistance and also Psi intensity. One of the most important things you want to do as quick as possible in once human is leveling up, as this can make your character a whole lot more powerful by unlocking new ciphers, which you can spend in the mammatic step to basically unlock new buildings, blueprints, new weapons, armor, cooking dishes, and so much more. There are plenty of different ways how you can do this, while my absolute favorite one is to do commissions at one of these guys, which you can find in one of the major towns, highlighted with these blue water drop icons, let's say. You can come across them all over the place, while each of them also comes with one of these commission dudes. If you interact with them, you can view the commissions, which also reset every single week, but after you've completed one of those, you will get a ton of credits and experience. Some tasks are very easy, like drive a vehicle for X distance or gather types of resources, which you're gonna have to do anyways. Especially the one with your camera, for which you only have to take five photographs. I mean, look at that, we complete even more season goals. We just level up to 41. This also completes our progression with season goals, but this is another place where you can get your hands on plenty more rewards. One of my favorite things in Once Human to make a whole lot of money and become more powerful while I'm at it is to farm bosses. These epic encounters are highlighted with a yellow monolith icon on the map, which can be done as much as you like. They come in different tiers of difficulty, while the rewards can also be very interesting. At the very end, you can secure the treasure chest, but this actually comes with two different options. If you press and hold secure, you can pick up a whole lot of weapon mods and energy links. While if you're not really into that or already found plenty of those, alternatively, you can eliminate all the loot and get much more parts in return. On top of that, at the end of the boss fight, you even have a chance of securing a rare deviant or deviation, which can be used to aid you in battle or farm resources at the base. This becomes a lot more interesting on higher level as then farming becomes easier, more efficient with better gear. So you can make money a little bit faster to get all the money and weapon mods you will ever need. Talking about weapon mods, well, this is how you can make your gear so much more powerful. We already talked about the upgrading and calibration. Well, this is how you can bring your character to the next level. If we open up our backpack and check out the mods menu, this is where you can start modding both weapons and armor, which can also be done at the gear menu, which I think is a little bit easier. But now we simply wanna click on say the crossbow, then we can press right click to modify and check it out. This allows us to put a mod in there, which can boost the stats, increase our weak spot damage or increase damage against Rosetta units. This one comes with a 60% crit rate on targets affected by the bull's eye effect. If we right click, we can equip it and even use salvaged mods to basically upgrade the tiers to make this even more powerful. Some weapons, like the sniper rifle, can also be upgraded with accessories, like different types of muzzles, which you can also find during your adventures to further boost its stats. We also have optics right here, so you can change the accuracy or the type of zoom you have on your weapon, different magazines to further increase the reload speed, capacity, and of course also different types of ammo. So if you're having trouble with a certain boss fight, this would be the place to be to maximizing your character stats deal more damage and increase survivability. Whew, that's a lot of information, but there you have it. Everything you want to know, essentials basically to start strong in one's human and be ready for any adventures ahead. If you enjoyed the content, would be very much appreciated if you can spare one second of your time, hit that like button, and also share your thoughts about the game in the comments down below. If you have more questions or video suggestions, always welcome to leave them right there as well. You can find plenty more guides on the channel while a lot more is coming your way. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay loop with future videos right now though it's 4am out so i want to wish you an amazing day i'll check you in the next video or live stream peace